Hi there and welcome back. This is Jenna from McGuire and I hope you're having a good week. So today I thought I'd share some simple tips of doing mirror die cutting. Mirror die cutting allows you to get a reverse image of your die cut. This lets you get new looks from dies you have and do creative card designs. I will also be sharing how to do a brochure fold card, which is great when you want to create a scene or maybe even have more room to write a personal message. If you're interested in mirror stamping, where you can get an image that is the opposite of what it's intended to be, I will link here up at the top right and in my description below to a video on mirror stamping, but today we're doing simple mirror die cutting. So I will talk about how I incorporated mirror die cutting into each of these examples, but we're gonna start with this one that you see here. This card features the Avriel rainbow dies. There is a coordinating stamp set. I just wanted to show it to you. I'm not using it today, but it does match up perfectly. What's unique about this die is that you can use it in many ways. I'm using it to create a rainbow today. However, you can easily create a shaker rainbow because it die cuts the outline too. So you can make each section have different colors of sequins in it. Lots of things you can do with this. I'm just doing some basic die cutting today. Now looking at this, you can see this die creates half of a rainbow. It's actually the half that's on the right, but I wanted the other half that's on the left. Now this is obvious, you just die cut two and glue one down upside down. However, if you've ever looked at the back of a die cut, it's not smooth and it doesn't have that nice smooth finish that the front of the die cut has. So I'll share tips on how to make your die cut more smooth so you can use the reverse side. So I'm going to die cut two pieces here. If you look at this die cut, even the front has these little ridges or indentations from the die. Sometimes that happens with different dies. I will also show you how to get rid of that. And then looking at the back, you can see it's kind of jagged because of my cutting plate having lots of cuts in it. It just doesn't look as clean. So I will show you how to get rid of that too. Okay, so I'm cutting two rainbows. These are from white cardstock. Uh, this is just Nina white heavyweight cardstock. And there you can see on the back how it's not as clean as the front. There are two different ways to do this, to make sure that your die cuts are clean and that the back looks as nice as the front. One way, and my favorite way, is to use a metal adapter plate, which many people have for die cutting. So I have a clear plate, my metal adapter plate, then I lay my die cut on top of that, and then put the other clear plate on top. So basically my die cut is sandwiched between a smooth metal adapter plate and my smooth top plate. I always keep my top plate nice and clean. I never cut into it. So because we put that pressure onto that paper between two smooth surfaces, we end up smoothing out our die cut and making it perfectly flat and getting in, rid of any of those bumps or uneven areas. It's amazing the difference that it makes. Another thing that you can do if you do not have a metal adapter plate is to take a piece of folded cardstock or copy paper and put your die cuts in the inside of the folded paper Put that between your cutting plates and run it back and forth. This also provides smooth pressure. I do find the metal adapter plate works a little bit better, but this definitely works well too. So if you ever get a die cut piece where you see the little bump from where the little hole is on the die that allows you to push it out, or you just don't feel your die cut is very smooth, or you want to use the back side of a die cut, do this trick where you just run it through your die cut machine with pressure. Just make sure you have something smooth on both sides of the die cut so you don't add more little bumps and nooks and crannies in it that transfer from your cutting plate. So I went ahead and cut out all the different pieces for my rainbows and then I squished them down so they were nice and flat and smooth. I then sprayed them with ThermaWeb Silver Glitter Dust. This is a great way to add sparkle to regular cardstock, and it doesn't rub off. It's really a great product, easy to do. I just spray it outside uh, while my cardstock is in a box. And there you can see the beautiful shimmer that you get on it. Okay, now that we have some of our die cutting done, let's go ahead and create the card itself. This is a brochure fold card design, so it opened up, opens up like a brochure. For this, I'm going to start with one note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. 
On the back of that note card, I'm applying some ink. I'm using a blending brush here and Altenew Sea Breeze ink. And I'm just applying like these little patches or little lines of ink. And this kind of creates a really quick and easy cloudy sky. I'm doing it kind of subtle because I want the focus to be on the rainbow. But you can see how I'm just doing areas of ink, just light pressure, just to give us that nice sky look. So here you can see the final result, quick and easy to do, and we have our cloudy sky on the back of that card. Okay, now we need another card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. We're gonna open that up. And on the inside right, I'm going to ink another sky. I'm using some purple tape here to mask off the left side. So I'm inking up to the crease line. And I'm doing the exact same thing that I did on our other note card. Now that we have our card pieces ready, it's time to assemble the card. Off screen, I did stamp sentiments onto the cloud portion of our die cuts. I used You Are Magical from this My Favorite Things Magical Unicorn stamp set, which is an older one, but then on the right here is a newer one. I love these unicorns. And I used a sentiment from that. That's the My Favorite Things Fairy Tale Friends stamp set. Such a cute set. Okay, now it's time to assemble. So there is our first card piece, that upside down inked card. On this, I'm going to glue down our rainbow piece, our first rainbow piece. This is actually the one that is upside down, but it's nice and smooth thanks to that trick of smooshing it in our die cut machine. I put liquid adhesive on the back and I'm gluing it right onto the edge. So the crease of our note card is on the right. I then put in all the little die cut pieces to fill in this outline. This is really easy to do. It fits in perfectly and creates a beautiful inlay look. If you wanted to, you could add dimension behind these pieces. You could have turned this into a shaker window. I just wanted a smooth look since the inside of the card will have the other half of the rainbow and it'll be smooth too. So I'm gluing in our little colorful pieces that have the glitter on them. And I like to press them in place with my bone folder. I then flip it over and I'm trimming off the excess. I decided to have the outline of the rainbow hang off the edge, so I'm just trimming it off there. Okay, now I also need to assemble the other half of the rainbow on the inside of the other note card. So I'm turning that card inside out just to make it easier. Putting liquid adhesive on the back of this. This is how the die cut is originally intended. So I'm gluing that down, and once again, I will glue in the other pieces giving them a nice inlay look, and then I can trim off the excess around the edges. Okay, now it's time to put these two halves together to create our brochure fold card design. So what I do is I start with that one that we created backwards, and on the inside left, I put strong adhesive. I'm using Gina K Connect liquid adhesive. You don't need to use much, just a tiny bit. And then you take the other card, and watch how I slide these together. I'm gonna close that card onto this, and there we have our brochure fold card design. And I'll show you a couple other examples of this in this video. There is that sparkle up close. You can see the smooth inlay technique and how smooth that backwards die cut is. And then when you open it up, you see the other half of the rainbow, and you can write a personal message in the middle. If you wanted, you could have put the right half of the rainbow in the middle section, and have your writing over to the right, but I like that look of having the writing on the inside of the rainbow. So by doing reverse die cutting, I was able to create a full rainbow from that single half rainbow die. Okay, let's do another example. In this case, I have another brochure fold card design, and you can see the wave on the left goes one way, and the wave on the right is the mirror of that. So again, we're going to do mirror die cutting or reverse die cutting to get the wave that goes in both directions. On this one, the card opens up the long way and my cloud background stretches across all three panels. So we're doing this one a bit differently. I'm starting with two note cards that are four and a quarter by five inches. And the crease there is on the left. So for one of the cards, I'm going to open it up and on the back, both sides of the back, I am putting that cloud inking where I just use a blending brush and apply a little bit of light blue ink. And I'm going to cover this entire side. Now we're going to take the other note card, open it up, and we're going to ink on that right inside panel. I'm going to mask off the left. You actually don't need to do that because that left panel will be hidden, 
but I masked it off just to make it easier. And then I'll apply some sky ink there too. At this point, I realized that my clouds need to meet in the middle there where we put them together. So I'm kind of adding some ink to blend them together. You could have first glued your card together and then done the inking, but I didn't think about it at the time. So now I'm putting just a little bit of glue there to glue it together just as I assemble it. And later I'll add more stronger glue in the inside. I just wanted to keep it open at this point. Now on this card, I used the Avriel Pool Party stamp set. That's that adorable set that you see there to the right. Such fun images and a cute little pool you can put them in. But I decided to use the wave from this Avery L Summer Scene die set. This is such a cool die. I'm actually just going to use the wave portions from this die. You could create a frame from it, lots of things. Now I did die cut that from a couple shades of pool cardstock. And you can see I did multiple die cuts here. Notice that the wave is always in the same direction. So I decided to flip one over for the left side of our card. Notice when I die cut it, you get that little raised edge there and it's not even and smooth looking. So I put it into my die cut machine with my metal adapter plate, no die needed. Just gonna put some pressure on these and squish them down and flatten them. I always keep my top cutting plate clean. I never cut into it. That way it's nice and smooth. My cutting plate that is not as nice is underneath that metal adapter plate. So now we have lots of die cuts that are nice and smooth and we can use both the front and the back. Okay, so now we're going to glue these pieces down onto the left panel and the right panel of our card. Now you'll notice that the waves don't meet in the middle. That's okay, I'm just gonna wing it myself. So I cut a piece of cardstock that's the width of that area in the center, which is five inches. And I'm just going to hold it there in the center. I'll then use my pencil to make a little mark where the wave ends on the first panel and where the wave starts on the other panel. Then I will just make a wave myself from a pencil that connects the two. Nothing fancy, and believe it or not, it doesn't matter how perfect it is, it ends up looking okay as long as you cut it smoothly. So I'll go ahead and glue those pieces into the center panel. I really like this wave design with the wave curling up on both ends, and I think I'll use it with some other images too. It's really quick to come together. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to have a really big word on the inside that would be a surprise when you opened it. So I used the new Concord and Ninth Joyful Tiles Stamp Set and Coordinating Die Set. So I'm going to stamp Enjoy and use the coordinating die. And I'll also use the It's Your Day on the front of the card. By the way, I stamped this with Gina K Wild Dandelion Ink, which is a perfect bright yellow. So now it's time to assemble the card. Off screen, I stamped, colored, and cut out these little pool party images. In the center panel, I added our enjoy die cut, and I stamped it's your day on the front of the card. Here I'm stamping little water droplets, and then I will go in and add a little bit of color to them with my Copic markers. You could create a really fun scene on here. I tried to keep mine kind of simple. I did add some sparkle with a glitter pen, and I added glossy accents to the sunglasses so they would have shine too. Okay, so now it's time to adhere our two pieces together. So I'm putting glue on the inside here, and then I will attach that to the other card just as we did before. So we'll have a brochure card design that opens up the long way. Okay, let's look at the completed card. You can see there is that little bit of sparkle and shine on the front of the card, very simple. But when you open it up, you have the other half of that wave and that huge enjoy sentiment at the center. And there's room there on the top right to add your own personal message. And by the way, that exclamation mark, that's not included in the stamp set. What I did is I stamped joy again, and I cut the exclamation mark out of the J. So I got kind of creative there with it just to get a little bit more out of my stamps and dies. Okay, now it's time for a third and final card. This one, the reverse or mirror die cutting is a little more subtle, but I show you another trick for getting more out of your dies. So for this one, I created my card as I did on my first example, the rainbow example. So I have these two halves of the card that I'm going to glue together. 
and I have that cloudy sky that I inked, and I just hand cut two grass borders for the left panel and the right panel. Now that I've glued my card together, I have another piece of green cardstock, and I'll use a pencil to help me connect the grass from the left to the grass on the right. After I cut along the pencil line, I can glue this in the center, and we have our scene ready to go. Now off screen, I went ahead, stamped, colored, and die cut a bunch of different images from Avriel. This is the Avriel Peekaboo car stamp set. So cute. You can even stamp the light on the top of it. And it, there's a sentiment that says, sound the alarm, it's your birthday. So much fun. And what's cool is they have lots of different stamp sets that fit in there. So this is the Avriel Peekaboo Scary Pal stamp set. You can see we have all these monster heads and then there's little hands that you can use too. Now I'm gonna use that one today, but I wanted to show you a couple others they have that you can use with the car or with, you know, on the same card. This is the Avriel Peekaboo Summer Pal stamp set. There's a little seahorse. You can have them in the little raft there on the bottom. And this is the Avriel Peekaboo stamp set. This is one of the first ones and it has all these cute images. You can have them peeking out of the car like I did today or peeking behind a little sign or anything else on your card. I'm also using the Avriel Plus frame. Now this die set has that great happy birthday to you die in the center and then also a fun frame die. But what I'm actually using is the speech bubble die, this big one that you see here. I love speech bubble dies, but this one is way too tall for the card that I'm doing today. So I'm going to show you a trick. So I'm going to die cut one of these from white cardstock. And I am going to die cut it again with the die offset so I can make my speech bubble much shorter. You could make this speech bubble as tall as you want, as short as you want. It doesn't matter. You just use this trick. So I'm moving the top of my die down close to the bottom of the die cut. And I'll put a little piece of tape there. Then I'll run it through my die cut machine and this cuts my larger speech bubble down to a smaller one. This is an excellent way to get more out of your basic dies. So I did that three times to create three smaller speech bubbles. I want to use the mirror image of one of them. So I wanna use the back side of one, but I need to make sure it's nice and smooth first so I'm taking my little speech bubble dies, putting it on top, of, on top of my metal adapter plate, putting my cutting plate on top, and just squishing it through my die cut machine. Again, if you don't have a metal adapter plate, just fold a piece of cardstock and put it inside that and run it through your machine. The cardstock or the adapter plate protects your cardstock from that cut up cutting plate that you have on the bottom. Okay, so off screen, as I mentioned, I die cut, colored, and stamped all these cute little monster images and put them together, so much fun. And now I'm gluing one onto each of the panels of our card. I also stamped little sentiments onto my speech bubbles. But at this point, I realized that those white speech bubbles don't really stand out against our sky background. I wanted a little more contrast. So I went back and redid all my speech bubbles on a Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock, which is a light color gray. I did the same trick of making the speech bubbles smaller, and you can see one of my speech bubbles faces the other way. And then I also stamped those sentiments. Now those sentiments are from that same Scary Pal Peekaboo stamp set that the monsters are in. I added some fun balloons, little presents, and there we have a fun little scene card. Lila gave this to her friend last night for her birthday, and so she wrote her little message on the top right on the inside. Okay, so here is the final card. From the front, it's pretty simple, but when you open it up, you see a whole lot more. And I really think surprise cards like this are especially fun for kids. Thanks to my mirror or reverse die cutting, I have speech bubbles going in different directions just to change things up. And thanks to that trick, I have smaller speech bubbles that fit better on our card. Okay, there you have some ideas for doing mirror die cutting, super simple, but I think those tips of creating clean die cuts is really helpful. If you are interested in the products I use, I always link them to a few different stores in my description below, but my blog has a whole lot more information. And in the middle here, I have a couple other videos I think you might find helpful. Thanks for watching this, I appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon.